not asking you to support this program. We want you to learn the truth. And so that's what we are endeavoring to do, and that is to take the message of the Bible uh, to encourage you to do the will of God. In Revelation 22, verse 17, the Bible says, The bride and the spirit say, Come. The Bible teaches us that him, let him that is a thirst come. Whosoever heareth, let him come and drink of the fountain of the water of life freely. Revelation 21 and verse number 6. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And he encourages us to drink of the fountain of the water of life freely. And that's what we are encouraging you to do. As you and I look at our lesson today, I want you to think about uh, a, a topic. I call this three bullets of Satan. Now, I want, I'm, I'm going to do something. I want to show you something here. Uh, and I'll just uh, lay this here. And I want to show you. I have a, I have a, a rifle. Uh, I have never, I have never uh, used this. I've never shot a bullet out of this rifle. But I want to use this today to help you to understand that Satan, if Satan had this rifle, and that Satan was trying to uh, get you to do something, he only really has three bullets that he can use. And so I want you and I to understand that when we look at this rifle, uh, I want you to just simply remember three bullets of Satan. Now, in the book of 2 Corinthians 2, verse number 11, the Bible says, Lest Satan should get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And so, in just a second, we're going to fire one shot. Now, don't worry, it's not going to come through the television. Uh, those who are helping me to produce this program, uh, they are not in any danger of any kind. Do not call uh, the uh, terrorist organizations and say, we've got one here uh, on television. Uh, the rifle is not loaded. I do not even know what size uh, shell would go in it. But at any rate, I want you to understand, I want to use this to illustrate what we are endeavoring to teach today. We are not ignorant, the Bible says, of the devices of Satan. The Bible teaches us in 1 Peter 5 verse 8 to be sober and to be vigilant. The Bible says your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who may, may devour. In the book of Ephesians chapter number 6, you remember that the Bible says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so the Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand. And then he tells us later on in verse number 18 that we are to stand therefore and that we are to pray in so doing. And so you and I need to recognize that the devil comes in sheep's clothing. In Matthew 7 and verse number 15, the Bible says, Beware of false prophets. What do they do? They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now, the devil only has three bullets. And so, as you and I look at these three, now I want you to think about this. If you are not a Christian, you're not a member of the body of Jesus Christ, you have not obeyed the gospel of Christ. You and I know the Bible teaches us that we're saved by the blood of Jesus. In Colossians 1, 13 and 14, the Bible said, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. In Ephesians 1 and verse 7, we have the same uh, wording. The Bible said, In whom we have redemption through His Son, uh, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. So you and I recognize that men are saved by the blood of Jesus. We are saved when we obey the gospel of Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. Paul said to the church at Corinth, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which you have received, wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, how that he was buried and raised again the third day according to the scriptures. When when a man obeys the gospel of Jesus Christ, when a man is baptized into Christ for the remission of sin. Acts 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. In Mark 16 and verse 16, the Bible says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. My friend, there's only one way that you can get into Christ, and that is you must be buried with Him in baptism. In Romans chapter number 6, beginning at verse 1, the Bible 
Bible says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. So what do we find out? We find out, my friend, that we are saved by the blood of Jesus and that we're baptized into Christ. And then in Acts 2 and verse 47, the Bible says, And the Lord added to the church daily those that were being saved or such as should be saved. Now here's what you and I need to understand. That in order to be saved, we must obey the gospel of Christ. And we must be in the body of Jesus Christ. We must be in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me emphasize this again. You cannot be saved and you can... Somebody say, whoa, whoa you tell me I can't be... I'm telling you what the Bible says. You cannot be saved. You cannot go to heaven outside of the body of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, 24, the Bible says, Then the end shall come, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom unto God, even the Father, and he shall have put down all rule. When you and I understand that the church, the body of Christ, will be saved in the end, that you and I must be in there. And so you, we must emphasize that, that you and I must be saved. We must be in the body of Jesus Christ. And every man, woman, boy, or girl who's reached the age of accountability, who has not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, cannot be saved in the day of judgment outside of the body of Jesus Christ. Now, with that in mind, I want you to think about something. And that is simply this, that when you and I look at this, we understand that the devil, when he has three bullets, all right, three bullets, number one, and that is he wants to keep you out of the church. In Ephesians 5 and verse number 8, now, you know, I'm going to take aim here. You don't have to worry. It's not going to come through your television screen. But now the devil takes aim at you. And here's what he said. He said, all right, I'm going to take aim and I'm going to fire this bullet. And this bullet is designed to keep you out of the church. In Ephesians 5.23, the Bible says that he is the Savior of the body. And so when you and I understand that He is the Savior of the body, when you and I understand that the church is the body of Jesus Christ, Ephesians 1 verses 22 and 23, and we understand there's only one body, so the devil says, I have got to keep individuals out of the church because if I don't, they're going to be saved. And if they're saved, they're not going to go to hell with me. They're not going to live with me eternally in damnation. In John 5, 28 and 29, the Bible says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of eternal life and those unto the resurrection of damnation who have been evil John 5 28 29 so when you and I look at this so the devil he's got one shot he wants to fire now here's how he does it alright number one he wants to keep you out of the church because that is where salvation is now here's what he will say he'll say oh God loves everybody uh, John 3.16, have you ever heard that? God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believed on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves you. See, I, have a, I read a book not long ago about how that love, well, everything is love. Well, we understand God's love. We understand the subject of love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We understand the Bible. John 13, 35, Jesus said, By this shall all men know you're my disciples, if you do what? If you love one another. Matthew 22, the Bible says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. He said, The second commandment is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And so, yes, God loves everybody. So what the devil says is you don't need to obey the gospel. You don't need to do anything because God loves you. And so because God loves you, uh, you're everybody, that's universal salvation. Here's another way he does that. Keeps you out of the church by saying this. Well, he'll say hell is a figment of your imagination. See, the hell, there's no place. Uh, hell is not a reality. 
Hell is a figment of the imagination. In spite of the fact the Bible speaks of hell as being a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. The Bible speaks of it. The, the Bible says, The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. Uh, the Bible says, And these shall go away into everlasting or eternal destruction. And so what you and I understand, the devil says, no, hell is not real. It is a figment of your imagination. Well, somebody needs to tell uh, the rich man in Luke chapter number 16, certain rich man clothed in purple and fine linen, fared sumptuously every day, certain beggar named Lazarus laid his gate full of sores, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. More of the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died, carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And listen to this, the Bible said, in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and he seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am tormented in this flame. My friend, let me tell you this. The Bible speaks to us. Hell is a reality. But the devil says, oh no, 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 no. It's just a figment of your imagination. So he tries to keep you out of the church. He fires that shot. He wants to keep you out of the church. And he'll do it by telling you, well, God loves everybody. He's going to save everybody. Uh, hell is only a figment of you. Or he'll tell you this. Well, now, uh, all you got to do is just be good. Be good morally. Father said, well, look, I don't, need, I don't need to be in the church. I don't need the blood of Jesus. I, I, I don't beat my wife. I take care of my family. I work hard. Uh, I work at, at my job. I give them more than uh, the eight hours, and, and I do a good job. And so I, I'm a good man. I pay my taxes. I pay my bills. I'm good to my neighbor. I love my neighbor. I want you to watch this in Acts chapter number 10. You remember Cornelius. The Bible says Cornelius was a devout man. The Bible says that he prayed to God always. The Bible says that he gave alms. The Bible says that, that he prayed, he was devout, and he gave alms. Now, I want to tell you that he was a good man. But let me tell you this, he was lost. The Bible says he had to send the Joppa to Peter for Peter to come and tell him words whereby he and his house could do what? Be saved. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up. I thought just being good morally would save you. No more. No, no, my friend. You and I, sin has separated man from God. Isaiah 59, uh, verses 1 and 2. The Lord's hand is not short and he cannot reach, neither is yours heavy he cannot hear. Your sin has separated between you and God. You and I know the wages of sin is death, Romans 6. We also know that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We know that there are none righteous, no, not one. We also know that sin cannot enter heaven, that you and I must be forgiven. And the only way that we can be forgiven of our sins is through obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Acts 2.38, then Peter said, These are the people, my friend, who crucified the Son of God. And Peter told them, and they cried out, What must we do to be saved? What can we do about this? And then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The devil will come along. Not only does he say, well, God loves everybody. Not only does he say, hell is a figment of your imagination. Not only does he say, all you have to do is be good morally. He'll come along and he'll say, ah, ha, 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 ha. They're hypocrites in the church. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They're hypocrites in the church. They're hypocrites where you work. You're going to quit your job. They're hypocrites where you buy groceries. You're going to quit buying groceries? My friend, listen, every man's heart has to be right in the sight of God. Not every man's heart is right. Yes, there are hypocrites in the church. As a matter of fact, Jesus addressed it in Matthew chapter 23. He said to these scribes and Pharisees, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you're hypocrites. Let me give you another one. How do you know who is right? See, the devil, he wants to... See, the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. So the devil will come along and he'll say, well, now look, wait a minute. You've got all these churches. How do you know which one of them is right? Well, let me tell you, my friend, you and I can know what is right when you and I simply go to the Bible. When you and I go to the Word of God, we can know what is right when we search the Scriptures. Jesus said, search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. And so you and I need to understand that the devil wants to keep you. Now, he's got three bullets. Number one, he wants to keep you out of the church. Number two, 
Suppose he he misses with that man. He fire, he he aims that he aims that bullet at you and he fires, but he misses. And guess what? You obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins. Now what is he going to do? He's got a second bullet. All right. So then with that second bullet, he'll take aim at you. And what he's going to try to do? Now I'm not a hunter. You you guys can tell by looking at this. What is he going to do? He's going to try to get you back into the world. In 2 Peter chapter number 2, verses 20 and 21, the Bible says, For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world by knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and become again entangled therein, it is worse with them, uh, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. He said it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after turning from it. He said it's like the true proverb, the dog turned to his own vomit and the sow that was washed to the wallowing in the mire. Now, well, I want you to watch this. There are some individuals who will say, no, no, no. Once you have become a Christian, there's nothing that you can do to be lost eternally. Well, the devil then is a fool. I, I mean, the devil's a fool because what he's going to do, he's going to tell you, well, no, no, no. I mean, the devil's a fool trying to get you out of the church if there's nothing you can do to be... My friend, let me tell you, the Bible says, let a man examine himself whether he be in the faith. The Bible says, if after they have escaped the pollution of the world by knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and become again entangled therein. Entangled what? Into the world. He said the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So now then, the devil fires his second bullet at you. How does he do that? What does he say? Well, he'll tell you this. He'll say, now you know what? You don't have, you don't have to worship on the Lord's day. You don't, have, you don't have 10 service on the Lord's day. In spite of Hebrews 10, 25, the Bible says, Forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Uh, or James 4 and verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Uh, in spite of the fact the Bible says 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needs not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth in spite of the fact that the Bible teaches us to assemble on the first day of the week uh, to partake of the Lord's Supper Acts 20 verse 7 uh, Matthew 26 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 but the devil said oh no no you don't have to go That's, I mean now once you I mean just don't what is his tactic He's trying to tell you, my friend, that it is not necessary. He's trying to get you back out into the world. And you know what he'll do? He'll sneak up on you. He'll sneak up on you. And he'll, he'll do it like this. Maybe you obey the gospel. I've seen this happen all oh, so many times, and it's very sad that an individual becomes a Christian, an individual obeys the gospel of Christ, and they attend the assembly of the saints together and, and they come to Bible study and they come on Sunday night and they come on Wednesday night uh, and then all of a sudden you notice they're not there on a Wednesday night but they're there the next Wednesday night but then all of a sudden you notice the second or third Wednesday night. and then before long it's Sunday night then before long it's Sunday morning what's the devil done? the devil is saying you don't have to go it's not necessary this one time won't matter what he'll say to you you don't need to attend tonight you don't feel good you worked hard all day uh, you're busy don't worry about it what has he done? he's captivated your mind See, the Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The things of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, these things of the world, they're not of the Father. The world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So he'll say, well, this one time won't matter. How does he do? How does he get you back out into the world? Well, he'll tell you this. Well, now, now the, 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 the leadership made a decision that I, I just don't like. Huh? As if, that, as if that exempts you from worshiping God? As if that exempts you from serving God? In Hebrews 13, 17, the Bible says, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves to them, for they watch for your souls as those that must give an account. Leadership has a responsibility in the church. They have this responsibility to make the decisions that will help you to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Peter said, 2 Peter 3.18. But grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter chapter number 1, Peter said, Besides this, giving all diligence, add your faith virtue, knowledge and temperance and patience uh, and brotherly kindness and love and so forth. 
And so what does the devil say? He says, oh, they, the leadership. No, no, they, they, they decided that they're going to paint the building a different color. I just don't like that color. Well, they keep it too cold in there. Well, they keep it too hot in there. Well, they don't do this and they don't do that. And so see what the devil's done? The devil has convinced you that you don't have to follow the leadership in the church. My friend, let me tell you something. God's will is that there be elders, bishops, pastors, overseers, all one and the same, and they have a responsibility to watch for your soul. But see, if the devil can convince you that the leadership is not making decisions, no, no, not based on what's right, not based on what the Bible says, based on what you like and don't like. See what the devil has done? He's convinced you. And so what do you do? You quit. He gets you back out into the world. What about the influence of another individual? 2 Samuel 13, 3, you remember the Bible says about Amnon? The Bible says that Amnon had a friend. Amnon committed uh, rape. He raped his own sister. And see what he did as a result of that, he had a friend and when you and I look at that and we look in the Bible and we see his, we see his friend telling him, here's what you need to do. You need, you need to tell your dad that, uh, that, that you're sick and so as a result of that, because you're sick, you get, you get to, to serve, uh, you only want Tamar to serve you. That's it. You tell your daddy David, I'm sick and I only want Tamar. And when she comes in, you rape her. Well, that's what took place. So my friend, what does the devil do? The second bullet is to keep you out of the church or to get you back into the world, excuse me, to get you back into the world. How does he do that? Well, he does that. Maybe you've got a friend. A friend says, oh, why don't we go camping this weekend? And so as a result of that, you don't worship. Uh, you weaken as a Christian. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 12, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not be conformed. So, bullet number two. And that is, the devil says, I want to get you. Now watch this. We've had two bullets so far. Number one, he wants to keep you out of the church. But he is not successful. And he lets you into the church. Alright? You get ahead. You obey the gospel. You become a Christian. Second thing he'll try to do, his second bullet is, he tries to get you back in the world. But you resist it. The Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So you resist the devil and you stay in there. Now he's got a third bullet and that is this. If he let you in and he can't stop you from obeying the gospel, it's your choice, my friend. You make the decision. Number two, if he cannot get you back out into the world, here's number three. Here's the last bullet he has. He loads that gun and he fires and here's what he tries to do to render you useless to the church. Revelation chapter 3 verses 15 and 16. John writes to the church at Laodicea. And John says, I would thou were hot or cold, but because thou art lukewarm, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. In Revelation chapter number 2, the Bible tells us about the church at Ephesus. And, and, and John goes through and talks about the greatness of the Ephesian church. But he said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. So now, how does he render you useless? Well, some of these things we've already mentioned very, very briefly, but uh, let me mention them just uh, one more time. Number one, forsaking the assembly of the saints together. We've already talked about that. Uh, <clears throat> but I encourage you not to seek first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, the Bible says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things shall be added to you. Uh, he, will, he will try to render you useless to the church. He'll say, well, now you don't have to. I mean, just put in a dollar or two on the Lord's Day. No, no. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2, Paul said, as I have given order to the church of Galatia, even so do ye upon the first day of the week that every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Don't do any work. You don't have, well, now just let the elders and deacons, you don't, you don't need to make any phone calls and you don't need to visit and, and you don't need to help around the church building and, and, there, and there's nothing. You just, you just wandered in there on Sunday morning uh, about 11 o'clock if that's the worship time or 10 after for some and just wander in there and take your seat, uh, sing a few songs or at least sit there with your mouth closed and, and you're going, what has he done? He's rendered you useless to the body of Jesus Christ. James chapter number 2, verses 17 through 26. James talks about the faith of Abraham. And he said, You show me your faith without your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. Three bullets of Satan. 
Bullet number one, keep you out of the church. But if he is not successful, what? then he'll use bullet number two, and that is to get you back into the world. And then bullet number three, and that is try to render you useless to the body of Jesus Christ. My friend, the devil is sneaky. He's brilliant. He is a deceiver. The Bible talks about the wiles of the devil. I want to challenge you. In the book of Luke, you remember what Jesus said to Peter? He said, Peter, Satan hath desired to have you, that he can sift you like wheat. But our Lord said, I have prayed for you. My friend, listen to this. When you and I study the Bible, we lift up our prayers and we do as James says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. I want to encourage you to obey the gospel of Jesus. If you're not a Christian, do not succumb to these three bullets of Satan. That's all he's got, my friend. That is it. And you can resist it. And you can be a faithful child of God. And then in the day of judgment, you can hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. We thank you for watching the Fountain of Life television program today. We encourage you to watch the program the next time it is on. May God bless you. Hearing device. Music record. Select. Selected. Selected.